Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. So, the show is Cinderella tonight. So, Cindy uh, has parents. And her mom is really sick, and she's dying. She's on her deathbed, and so she uh, calls her daughter over. She knows she's going to die. And she's telling her um, that she wants her to be, to continue to be a good and devout little girl, and God will reward her and protect her. From the, from the other side uh mama's gonna keep an eye on you and then she closes her eyes and she dies she takes her last breath and then they bury her and the grave that she's on winter came and it laid a white blanket over over the grave and then when spring came and removed that blanket her dad went and got married He's like, mm, it's been three months. He waited three months, and then it was warm again, and love was in the air. He remarries. And she has two daughters, so now Cindy has two stepsisters, and they're beautiful, but they're black at heart. Yeah, their face, they have, they're beautiful in face, but uh, cold and black in their heart. And you can just sense the evil inside of them. So one evening... Um, They're all sitting at dinner at the table, and they're eating. And the stepsisters uh, make fun of Cinderella, and they call her a stupid goose. And they tell her that she has to earn her bread, so she must go eat with the kitchen maids. Took away her pretty clothes and gave her ugly gray clothes, wooden shoes. She was beautiful before this family came into the mix. So it wasn't like she was never considered lowly before uh, her mom died. They make her work all day uh, into the evening, fetching water. She would have to cook and clean and uh, make fires. But they still weren't satisfied. She has to build these fires so there's ash on the ground. And the sisters would throw lentils and peas uh, into the ash and make her pick it up mm-hmm. uh, because that was her bed. She didn't have a bed. And she's always dirty and covered in ash. So she slept in the cinders, hence they gave her the nickname, Cinderella. Then, one day, there's a fair that the father is going to go to, and uh, he asks the two stepsisters. He asks his stepdaughters before he would ask his real daughter. And she's like, Dad, I, I don't want anything. Uh, you gra- Just get me the, the twig, the first twig that hits your hat on the way home. Yeah, she takes that twig and she takes it to the grave and she's she's like praying and crying because it's too soon and she's being picked on and she's trying to be a good girl because she she wants to make her mom proud she plants that twig in the ground and she cries into it and it blooms into a tree uh, a hazel a hazel bush or hazel tree and there's a white bird that flutters around but now she has this bird that she can talk to and she is connecting with her mom through the bird. She wishes to the bird, and the bird grants her wishes. Somehow, it just does. They live in a kingdom, so there's a king. There's always a king. And he makes an announcement that there's going to be a three-day-long festival um, where all the beautiful maidens of the land are invited because the prince has to choose a bride. And so the sister... They're all excited, and the sisters are so excited that they make Cinderella brush their hair and wash their clothes and tie their shoes and buckle their buckles. And and Cinderella is really upset, and she's crying, but she does it anyways. Because she's good. Because yes. she's trying to make her mom proud. And then she asks her stepmom if she can go. And she's like, no, you don't have any shoes. You don't have any clothes. You're not, you're not pretty, and you can't dance anyway. And so Cinderella pushes it a little bit and just cries and cries and begs and begs. She, begs. And she persists because she has been a good girl mm-hmm. and she's doing what her mom her mom has asked her to do. And now it's time for her to get out there. 
in the world. And then the mom says, you know what, you can, if you pick up a bowl of lentils from the ash within two hours, then you can come. Stepmom thinks it's impossible. But Cinderella has now, now knows that her mom is there with her because that bird grants her wishes. And that tree just bloomed out of, out of like nothing. She's like, I believe in miracles. So now she was, she felt better. She started feeling better. And she was like, I want to go to this, this festival. I'm going to get it done. And she goes to her room, and she calls out for the birds, for, for the, all of the birds to come help her pick up these lentils. She just goes out to the window and says, all of the birds out there, come here and, and help me get these lentils. And she said, the good ones go in the pots, and the bad ones go in your crops. And then all of the birds under the sky, all of the birds came, and they pick up all of the, all of the lentils, all of the lentils and all of the seeds, and then they go, and she's got a bowl full of lentils and seeds. She was hopeful. She was like, I'm going to get, I'm going to take my life back. So she brings the bowl back to her stepmom, and her stepmom's like, and she's like, here you go, now can I go with you? And she's like, no, you don't have any clothes, and you don't have any shoes. And then Cinderella cries and begs, and then she's like, all right, fine, but you have to pick up two bowls of lentils in one hour. And you can go. So she goes, calls to all of the birds, and the, all the birds come back and make two bowls, and she takes those two bowls back to her stepmom. She got the bowls, and then she was like, can I go to the festival? She's like, no, because you're not very pretty, and you don't dance well either. And we'd be embarrassed of you. Everybody would laugh at you. They, they're all going to laugh at you. And so they turn their backs on her, and they go to the ball. So Cinderella runs out to her mother's grave and she starts crying. She wishes to the bird and she says, Shiver and shake, dear little tree, gold and silver shower on me. Bird. So she had got a, a gold and silver dress and some s silk and silver shoes, like slippers. It was a pretty dope uh, dress and everybody was totally going to love it. So. And she went to the ball. No one recognized who she was and thought she was like a beautiful foreigner. Her stepmom and, and stepsisters, they figured it obviously wasn't her because she's home picking up lentils. And uh, she dances the night away with the prince. The prince is totally digging her because everybody is. She's, she's the belle of the ball. And if someone would come up to the prince and ask him to dance, he would tell them, no, I have my partner. She's, he was smitten over her, and kind of a little too much. So she figured, you know, it's, it's time to put, it, put the night to an end. She's Runs like, away, I guess. Yeah, and, ready to go. And he's like, oh, I'll, I'll escort you home. And then she's like, oh, have to get away from him. She's embarrassed of what she, that she's the she little belongs. Cinderella. She, she jumps into a pigeon coop. And by crazy random happenstance, the dad bumps into him, into the prince, and was like, hey, buddy, we're, we're going to take off. Uh, I, I, I hope you enjoyed my daughters here. We're going to come back tomorrow. Um, and then he was like, like oh, yeah, I guess. this maiden that I was dancing with all night, and this beautiful, she ran into the chicken coop, and he's like, could it be Cinderella? Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, so go grab me an axe. To chop down the chicken coop, the royal chicken coop. So he chops it down to get her out. But she's not there, so. He couldn't find her. So they go home, and there she is, laying in the uh, ash, uh, sleeping, as she w uh, is to do. All dirty and ugly. Wearing her dirty garb. And uh, what had happened was she climbed down the back of the, the chicken coop, and uh, ran to the grave, changed out of her awesome dress and into her regular clothes, and ran home. So day two, she goes to the tree, and the tree gives her an even uh, more beautiful gown than the night before, and prettier shoes. She goes to the ball, and everything, she's so beautiful, and the princess dances with her all night. And when anyone else asks for a dance, he says, no, this is my partner. And then at the end of the night, when she's ready to go home, the prince is, like, he's very, very curious. Like, why did she run away? What's, what's going on? And then she's like, well, I'm going to walk you home. And then she 
slipped away. Again. So she snuck away into the garden, royal garden. There was a beautiful giant pear tree, um, and she jumped up the pear tree and climbed up its branches like a squirrel. Prince is standing there like, well, that's odd. He summons the the royal uh, service man, the dad. He, he's like, uh, the girl ran in the, up in that tree. Um, mind getting her down? I've got my axe. I was totally prepared this time. Uh, so I'll go ahead and chop down that tree. And again, better not be Cinderella. But then there was no one in the tree. And so they go home and they see that uh, Cinderella is still on the floor sleeping at home in the ash. Day three, as she goes back to the grave where the hazel tree is. And she wishes for the things that she does wish for. Uh, which is dresses and stuff to impress the entire kingdom. And they give her the most beautiful dress anyone has ever seen and shoes made out of gold. There, She's got some gold shoes that are probably really heavy because they're not hollow. So she goes to the party and everybody's like, dude, that chick is taking it. Like, she's she's obviously going to get him, right? Right? Like, because he's spending the entire three festival days with this chick. And uh, so why does everybody should just give up? So she runs away from him because he's going to walk her home again or whatever, but she's afraid. So she runs away, but he waxes the stairs. Uh, It was cobbler's wax. But it's not like, it's not like slick. It's a sticky wax. She lost a shoe because he waxed the steps. But she got away anyways. He picked it up, and it was it was small and dainty and pure gold. And he was like, this is my lady. And next morning, he takes it to the, the father. Because he's a royal servant. He's like, whoever fits the shoe, I'm going to marry. That's, that's the one that's, that's so I'm, like, my wife. My wife. So he's, like, he's like, well, I have, I have daughters that you can start with first sister the stepmother takes her into the other room to try the shoe on and she can't get the shoe on because her big toe is sticking out and so the stepmother handed her a knife and said cut it off once you're queen you won't have to walk anymore you ain't need no feet if you ain't gonna <laughs> walk the mom's calling the shots and so she does it no problem and she hides her pain and she walks out to the prince to show him that the shoe fits and he's like all right, good enough. So he gets on his horse and he starts back to the kingdom. But on the way, they have to pass the grave. Yeah. The hazel tree. And then the bird says, Prithee, look back. Prithee, look back. There's blood on the track. The shoe is too small. At home, the true brat is waiting by call. So then the prince looks back and he sees the the trail of blood and so he takes back the, the sister and he's like this is the wrong one <laughs> let's go ahead and try the next one i guess you should probably take this one to a therapist <laughs> so stepsister and stepmom go back into the other room and she puts her foot in but her heel's sticking out so the stepmom's like Someone's cut like, it off you probably should have cut you should, you should cut that off anyway <laughs> you don't need you don't need that heel because uh, you ain't going to do any walking when you're queen because it works so well for the last one. <laughs> Cuts off her heel and uh, fits in the shoe, swallows her pain, goes out to the the prince, and then you're like, I'm here for you, Mr. Prince. He's like, sweet, I guess the <laughs> second time's a charm, and it just happened to be in the same family. Something, <laughs> this this seems a little screwy. So he, uh, they get in the horse and ride off towards the kingdom and they pass the hazel tree again and uh, birds they, they make their call Rick Digu Rick Digu there's blood in the shoe the shoe is too tight the bride is not right so he looks down and he sees that shoe is full of blood yet again he got tricked twice what does he do he takes her back to the ca- the house the, to the father his name's Kevin. I forgot to, to, to mention that. Uh, goes back to Kevin's house. Say, Kev, uh, your daughters are crazy. They're cutting off their feet to fit in this shoe. Um, but I'm willing to give you another chance. 
let's see, don't you have another daughter? He's like, no, uh, just, no, just that from uh, my first marriage. She's ugly. <laughs> she's she's not like pretty she's, or anything. She's too ugly. Don't don't yeah. probably don't even worry about it. It's like I insist. Might as well knock this uh, house off the list because he's gonna go after this house to the next house until he finds the the woman that uh, fits this shoe. The mom's like, but seriously, she's she's really ugly. She can't dance. She's kind of dumb and she's full of dirt she like has dirt all over her so don't I like, really it's she can't be seen right now and he's like no I insist so it gets Cindy and she's like she's like I'm I'm gonna finally get what I need so I'm gonna wash myself up I'm gonna I'm gonna fit in my shoe because I know that's my shoe she washes her face and her hands she cleans herself up she bows at the prince and he gives her the shoe she, she tries on the shoe and it fits and so the prince looks at her looks at her and then he knows that it's her and so then they get on the horse and he takes her back to the kingdom where they pass the grave in the hazel tree with the bird again and then the bird says Prithee look back, prithee look back. No blood's on the track, the shoe's not too small. You carry the true bride home to your hall. Basically saying, yeah, dude, that you got the right girl right there. Birds go fly over to him and over to her and land on either side of her, either shoulder, both two of them. And they're now, they follow her to the kingdom. And now it's wedding day. And so the sisters, they go to the wedding. They beg for invites to share in her good fortune. And they walk her to the church and on either side of her. Uh, and the pigeons are there hanging out uh, since, you know, however long it took from the time from the hazel tree until now. They've just been hanging out on her shoulders. And the birds each pluck her nearest eye out of either of them. Then they go through the wedding and they do their thing. They get married. No big deal. After the ceremony, they leave. They like switch sides. They're like, uh, I can see better now this this side. So you switch sides. And then they do. And then the birds are there on her shoulders still because that's what they do. And they pluck the other eyes. Like they're evening it out. That was a punishment. Punished for their cruelty. Their wicked ways, their dark souls. We'll close the chapter on this episode until we meet again. And so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.